Hello everyone, back to you in today's second video. So I've already issued the five day forecast. You can find that video here on the homepage. Just scroll down the page a little bit and it's the bottom gap. There's also the uh, written version you gets out from buttons at the top of the page. Uh, starting off a bit unsettled for today, but things will be improving uh, a lot over the next few days. So by the time you get through to Bank Holiday Weekend, we're in for a good deal of dry and pretty warm uh, weather as well. A really nice Bank Holiday Weekend uh, coming up. This second video is going to extend out beyond the five day forecast forecast period time frame so we'll be going up to the 7 to 10 day time frame uh, up to around the 12th or 13th of May and it looks as though we're going to be telling things a little bit more unsettled next week but nothing too bad uh, coming up through the first half of uh, May. I'll talk to you uh, all the charts in a moment. Uh, we'll start off though by having a look at um, the climate averages uh, for April, because all the data is in now at the UK Met Office. So that's where we'll begin uh, for the today's second video. So the centering temperature from Hadley is uh, in, and uh, for April we stand at 9.8, which is an anomaly of 2 degrees above average. Been a very warm uh, April indeed. Maybe a little bit surprising, because we have a lot of cloudy, overcast, and fairly chilly uh, things day so i'll talk you through why i think we've come out with such a warmer than average month uh, in a moment but uh april for its central temperature comes out uh, two degrees above 61 to 1990 average at 9.8 degrees but a funny old year january uh comes out at 5.3 uh, an anomaly of one and a half degrees above average. Then February and March both come out around a degree colder uh, than average. Then we've had this two degree uh, anomaly for April. May, so far, provisional up to the first, is standing at just eight degrees, 8.0. And that's one and a half degrees below average. But this is going to lift up a lot over the next few days, of course. Uh, as the high pressure builds in from the Azores, we are going to see much warmer conditions. So in around four or five days' time, that will probably be uh, going warmer than average. And of course, then we'll see where we go uh, from the rest of May uh, as we get further into the month. Uh, we'll be bringing you the uh, May month end forecast tomorrow. I want to get that done today, but I just haven't had time doing the five day forecast as well. So uh, that will be tomorrow's first video. The May month end forecast will be with you uh, then. So let's have a look at why we've had this uh, warm temperature anomaly uh, for April. Well, I think partly anyway, we've had. Uh, such a warm temperature anomaly. So we'll just zoom out. We're on the climate averages page at the uh, UK Met Office. So this is the UK uh, wide temperature anomaly set against 61 to 1990 for uh, April 2018. You can see that uh, it has been a warm month through all parts of the country set against 61 to 1990. It's been warmer than average. For Scotland and Northern Ireland, we come out around one degree above average. For uh, England and Wales, we're coming out uh, around one and a half to two degrees above average in those deeper uh, red colours. Uh, let's just quickly click this over to uh, the mean maximum temperature uh, though. So we'll have a look at that and uh, you'll see that in terms of the mean maximum temperature set again at 61 to 99. So all places again coming out uh, warmer than average uh, and again particularly down in the southeast where the anomaly is nearly two degrees but most places are coming out with an anomaly around half degree to one and a half degrees above average for the mean maximum. But you have a look at the mean minimum temperature set against 61 to uh, 1990. You can see that particularly for England and Wales most places are coming out over two degrees above average for the minimum temperature. So what's actually happened is that whilst both maximums and minimums have been uh, milder than average during April. It's particularly the nights that have made the difference. It has very warm nights down across the south and the southeast. Probably a lot of over overcast and cloudy uh, nights. And that's kept the temperature held up quite well. Uh, and so that's it's mainly primarily the minimum temperatures. That's other reason uh, that we've come away uh, with such a warm April. If we set this against uh, the 81 to 2010 average, that's how the minimums are looking. Uh, mean minimum temperature anomalies set against 81 to 2010. You see those dark red colours uh, down in the south. Uh, not 
quite such a deviation further north. That eastern Scotland has been close to average uh, with minimum temperatures set against 81 to 2010. But if we flip over again to maximum temperatures, look at that, you can see that again, the daytimes have been cooler than the nighttime. So the daytime temperatures under the cloudy skies and uh, frequent sort of easy wind, the daytimes have felt quite cool. Still coming out a little bit above average set against 81 to 2010, but nowhere, the devi nowhere near the deviation that we have for the uh, minimum uh, average temperatures. So that's the reason we come away with such a warm month. It's actually been the uh, nights that have kept the temperatures warm rather than uh, the days so much. Uh, and then in terms of precipitation, so it's been a wetter than average month through many parts of the country. Northern Scotland, interestingly, coming out a bit drier than average up there. But most parts of uh, England and Wales, even southern Scotland, coming out with above average precipitation anomalies uh, during April. Again, with Northern Scotland coming out uh, driving average, it indicates that we have probably had quite a blocking signal again during the course of April. This happened in March, of course, that the south was wetter than the north. It's happened again uh, in April, although some parts of southern Scotland, as I say, have come out with a slightly wetter than average month. But um, particularly across England and Wales, it's been another pretty wet month during April, telling us that again, the jet stream has probably been uh, south of its usual position. We've probably had northern blocking. It's just the way every Everything has aligned. We've actually brought in quite warm air from sort of southern Europe uh, as opposed to uh, cold air from uh, northern Europe and uh, the Arctic uh, regions. So it's been a strange month this April, above average rainfall, but also above uh, average temperatures. We'll see tomorrow when we come to issue the uh, month air forecast for May. We'll begin by going over the Gazweb's April uh, forecast and we'll see how the, uh, all that fits in with the forecast that we issue for April uh, when we uh, issue the May month of forecast tomorrow. That'll be the first video that you see uh, tomorrow here at Gav's Weather Leads. So that's April done and dusted. Let's go on with some forecasting and we'll uh, start off with GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles. Uh, looking at London today, the red line here is a 30 year upper air temperature average for London, starting a little bit cooler than average still today. It's not got much longer to run though, this cooler stuff, because as we go through to the second half of the week and then into, into the back holiday weekend, particularly. We find those temperatures are lifting up a lot. So it's going up to 10 Celsius or above 10 Celsius at 850 HPA. That's going to be bringing the temperature up at least to the upper teens or below 20 Celsius down in the southeast. After that, as we go through next week, that's this period just here, heading up towards the second half of the month or the middle of the month, we see that the temperatures are cooling down. So, again, it's similar to the warm up that we had uh, about uh, 10 days or so ago, maybe a couple of weeks ago now. Uh, similar to that, it's not going to last all that long. It will go quite warm uh, back on the weekend, but then after that, we see the temperatures dropping. Although the mean uh, white line, uh, that's indicated by white line just there, which is the ensemble mean. Uh, so that's taking all these individual sort of lines of spaghetti, as I call them, and creating one individual mean line that sort of represents the, uh, the broad thrust of the ensemble suite. That is still staying above average. It's still staying above that red line, albeit not as much. But uh, it looks like the first half of May is going to be coming out uh, warmer than average. Although there is a lot of scattering there, so we have several ensemble members that are keeping things really warm, actually, through this second week of May. Several that are going quite cool. So it's a little bit uncertain this second week of May, what is going on. Uh, there, but uh, I think overall the chances of it going to say generally quite mild or quite warm, even if it's at a reduced level compared to uh, what we had during the bank holiday weekend. Temperature anomalies are looking like that, so uh, not too far from average. I expect it to be a little bit warmer uh, than this, to be honest, by now, but still a bit above average from the 2nd through uh, to the 10th of May. So uh, it looks pleasant anyway, it's not going to be colder uh, than average. And in terms of the precipitation anomaly for uh, the next week, from the 2nd to the 10th of May, a little bit wet and average from the very far north of Scotland, but most places are coming out uh, with a drier than average uh, precipitation anomaly. By the way, I don't think I talked about the precipitation on the ensemble, so let's just deal with that. So we've got wet weather crossing the country today. 
Then after that, a prolonged period of dry weather, uh, starting pretty much from tomorrow and going through the bank holiday weekend. Uh, after that, we go through the second week of May up to the middle of the month. It's a little bit more unsettled. The rainfall spikes are there to some degree. But uh, to be honest, even into the second week of May, it certainly isn't an overly wet uh, signal. Yes, it may be a little bit more unsettled compared to what we're going to have through the first week of May, uh, particularly over bank holiday weekend, which is looking dry. Um, but even into uh, the second week, Bank going up to the middle of the month. It doesn't look overly unsettled. Remember, that is for London, though. That's down in the south. So if we looked at an ensemble for somewhere further north, it would probably be uh, it would probably be a little bit uh, wetter than that is uh, showing. So I have a look at the uh, GFS uh, charts next, then, once the page has finished uh, refreshing. So uh, I'm having a few problems with the computer at the moment, running very, very slowly on a lot of these tabs. So uh, it's making it quite difficult to uh, do the recordings at the moment. I'm not sure uh, where the problem lies, but hopefully it's something that will uh, resolve itself. So uh, we've got the GFS here for Sunday and we've got this ridge through the country on Sunday, bringing a lot of uh, dry weather, as I say, over Bank Holiday Weekend. We are in for plenty of fine conditions. And then that takes us through to uh, Monday as well, where the ridge is building through the country. So over the Bank Holiday Weekend, it's going to be mostly warm and dry. This low pressure will be threatening unsettled conditions to the far northwest of Scotland by the end of Bank Holiday Monday. But essentially, uh, most parts are going to even be under that ridge for Bank Holiday Monday as well. Then we go through to Tuesday. I mentioned it's turning a little bit more unsettled. So low pressure starting to come in from off the Atlantic because this uh, ridge is weakening. So probably a band of cloud and rain moving into the north and west on Tuesday. Mostly dry, I would have thought, down in the south. Middle of next week builds a little bump of high pressure up from the south, so it'll be generally quite dry there from the middle of next week. Unsettled again up to the north and west with that area of low pressure. And then we go into the extended range, we keep this sort of pattern going. So it's a bit of a north south split really through the course of next week. High pressure never far away from the south, should keep it. Uh, fairly dry, maybe a few showery bursts coming through at times, but really the south is looking mostly dry through the course of next week, I think, close to this ridge. Whereas in the north, it is more unsettled. There will be some bands of cloud and uh, showery rain probably moving through at times across the northern parts of the country. That's how things are looking on day 10, where it's quite unsettled in the north. And probably a band of rain moving southwards, so even southern parts of the country, perhaps turning a little bit more unsettled there. And then we go up to the middle part of May, so beyond uh, day 10, uh, now, what this particular run of the GFS wants to do is take this high pressure out to the west of us for the middle of the month and pull down uh, quite a cold northerly wind, turn things more unsettled. That's a very long way off, uh, middle of May, and I think that is highly uh, speculative weather that would actually happen, uh, but we pull that ridge out into the Atlantic like that and pull down those normally winds. I'm a bit dubious, but uh, I suppose it's an option. It is a possibility that we might do that, but it's far too far away to have any confidence in it. Uh, East Anglia, uh, finally, so again, we've got the ridge through the country for the uh, bank holiday weekend, and that sticks around to bank holiday Monday as well, so lots of dry, and uh, it's a little bit warmer as well, I think, the East Anglia, so probably uh, that will be lifting temperatures up to the mid-20s Celsius by bank holiday Monday down in the south, uh, I would have thought. It's a little bit warmer than the GFS this morning. Um, beyond that, so we go through to the start of the working week, which is Tuesday, the 8th of May, and that high pressure slipping back into Scandinavia, allowing these areas of low pressure to begin to move in from off the Atlantic. And so that's a trend through next week, similar to what the GFS is doing. It does turn more unsettled for northern and western parts of the country, but you'll notice the south is never far away from this extension from the Azores High. So the south keeps quite a lot of dry weather going throughout much of next week, whereas the north will have some cloud and rain at times coming through this second week of May. That's how we finish up on day 10, and it looks as though we're getting another ridge building up from the Azores High, so that's bringing drier and warmer conditions back even into uh, northern parts of the country. 
by the time we get through to day 10. So, uh, all in all, it's not looking too bad at all through the uh, first half of May, I don't think. We've been talking about this in the videos a lot just recently. Obviously, not going to be completely dry from start to finish. Not going to have, like, two weeks of continuous dry weather. But particularly for the south, I think there will be plenty of uh, dry and fine conditions on offer. It will always be a little bit more unsettled up in the north, especially as we go through uh, next week, where there will be some strong winds and some uh, bands of cloud and rain moving through at times for northern and western parts of the country but down in the south lots of dry weather till we get to the middle of the month and then maybe we might be looking at something uh, quite a lot colder and more unsettled around the middle of the month but that's a GFS and it, as I say it's a really long way off that uh, and I don't think we should take that particularly, particularly seriously so within the reliable time which is like well next week to 10 days lots of uh, fine and fair weather not continuously dry, always most unsettled in the north, always driest and warmest down in the south. And as we've been saying, Bank Holiday Weekend is looking good. Right, tomorrow we'll start off with the May month air forecast. We'll also have a look at the next week to 10 days and we'll have that final uh, I think it's the seventh uh, update for the May Day Bank Holiday Weekend. That'll be the last video tomorrow uh, in the evening. So free updates coming up for you tomorrow. But that's all for now and thanks for watching.